Yo, Elliot, first of all, I would like to sincerely thank you for your service to this world. I've been studying your teachings for a while now, and they are starting to manifest clearly in my life. Every day I try to become a better man and a stronger pillar in my family, community, and country. My purpose as a young man in this world has never been more clear. That is great news, man. I'm happy to hear that. You may have already answered my question in another coding, but I'm going to ask this question anyway because I really appreciate your input and it concerns something that is important, an important theme in my life right now. I am by nature a very enthusiastic and inquisitive young man who likes to learn and do all kinds of different things. Ever since I was little, I looked up to men who were good at different things and strong all around. I'm involved in many different things myself, but I'm starting to see that it's counterproductive and that I'll never really master at least one discipline if I continue to live the way that I do right now with my energy and attention being very scattered. I am becoming clearer about my soul goals as of right now. My question is, how do I protect myself from all the cool things in the world that can drag me off my path? As I said, I'm very natural with enthusiastic, enthusiastic, eager to learn, but this is also makes me a person who gets easily distracted and led astray by other exciting adventures in the world. I look forward to your reply uh, for now. All the best. So I can relate to that because I'm the same way. I, maybe we're neurodivergent, right? It's a little bit of it's a little bit of ADD, right? And ADD is not all bad, right? Because it makes us curious. It makes us passionate, right? And I get curious and passionate about all kinds of things. And that's why I said earlier, I'm a dilettante. I'm not really a master at anything. Uh, I, I could say that my mastery most lies most heavily in my delivery of ideas and my talking. I'm, you're, you're watching my mastery, but this is, <laughs> that's, I'm just talking about all the things that I'm a dilettante about, right? So I, you know, I found a way to sort of, sort, sort of, uh, hedge my hedge my bets right like i can still be neurodivergent right but it, but it helps me right and i've i've fallen off track too with this man i i never there were times when i didn't realize that my area of mastery is delivery of ideas right is the is is speaking about ideas delivering ideas having conversation and mentoring that particular way. but i'm not even really a mentor <laughs> I'm not. I'm just giving my ideas. And because I have a lot of ideas, because I like a lot of different things. Right? That's why there's 12 King Commandments. It's all the different things. I've been really excited about learning. And then I teach you guys it, right? But I'm not even like... Anyway, I, I know this is not about me, but this is how I am a lot like you, right? And I, I recognize my shortcomings. And like yourself, I found a way to minimize the negative effects, but, posi but focus on the positive, right? And develop the positive. Some of the things that I do, first of all, that, that keep me on track, and I, of course, I'm just gonna speak for myself, right? Because maybe you could see your, I see myself in you, so maybe you see yourself in me. Number one, if, because my time is limited these days, I don't have the time that you have. And having too much time, I think, what do they call it? It's like, uh, there's something's law, Murphy's law, or something's law, where like, if you have a lot of something, you'll waste it all. Right? I forget what they call it, but there's a law that if you have a lot of time, you're going to waste it. You have a lot of money, you're going to waste it. But if you have a little bit of it, you focus in on it and you make real good use of it. Right? <laughs> I don't have that much time. Every moment of my day is spoken for. So I can't waste my time in, you, in purposeless pursuits. But I would like to. I would love to learn more about all kinds of just interesting things because life is so interesting, right? I want to know about all of it. I want to do it all. But because I have limit, limitations on myself, I have to prioritize. And so I have to ask myself a number of questions. Number one, what is the value in this? What is the value in this? Right? So for example, most of my reading relates to the faith, religion. I've always thought highly of religion, and I've always wanted to know more about religion, but I've doubled down and I've focused my efforts that much more today. Why? What's the value in it? The salvation of my soul, eternity, <laughs> right? Because my time is limited 
per day, but also because I'm getting older, I recognize my time on this planet is limited. And then there's something else. I have to focus in on what are my priorities. Well, I, my time is limited. And so I'm going to focus on the thing that's going to give, yield me the greatest profit. What's going to yield me the greatest profit long run? Eternity, the salvation of my soul. So prayer, learning about the faith, deepening myself, just these various things, staying in a state of grace, frequenting the sacraments. These take top priority in my life. Why? Not because I, it's, it, it's interesting, listen, it's not because of me thinking most highly of those things. I do, but it's not because I think most highly of those things. That's not why. It's because I have limitations that need to be addressed. As a young man, it's hard to know your limitations. It's hard to have, it's hard to know your boundaries. Right now, as a young man, life seems boundless. That is exhilarating, but it's also confusing. What you've got to do is create, you have to see limitations. And understanding that you're going to die is a healthy limitation that all men must confront and must consider if he's going to live rightly. Consider your death. That is the first limitation that you need to bring to mind. And when you die, you're going to ask yourself, why did I waste my time learning about how caterpillars mate when that yielded me no profit except, now listen to this. It's effeminate to satiate curiosity. I know that sounds crazy, but purposeful curiosity quenching of or, or purposeless quenching of curiosity is effeminate because you're just entertaining yourself and i get it because there are a lot of things that i want to entertain myself with wow it'd be so fascinating to learn that but what is the profit in it what's the profit in learning that there's no profit i don't need to know that you're just entertaining yourself so you got to recognize time is limited you might not have the daily limitations that i have but your time here is limited don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. That's the first limitation. The other thing is, too, you have a limitation in terms of your safety and security. You got to feed yourself. You got to house yourself. You got to take care of yourself. You got to ask yourself, what's the monetary profit in this? I know not everybody likes to hear this. Oh, Elliot, it's not all about money. Oh, but it is all about survival, right? Until you die, you got to take care of this vessel. For me, it's imperative based on the limitations of living in the flesh that I learn things related to making money. I got to learn marketing. I got to learn sales. I got to keep up to date on, the, on, on my particular business, which is... I'm, I'm reaching people through the internet and social media. I don't want to make TikToks. They're kind of fun. I'm enjoying myself. But I was out of necessity because of the profitability that is, that is required for me to live. I, got a, I, I hired a TikTok coach. Believe this. I hired a, a TikTok coach. They do TikTok research and, and, and develop TikTok strategies. Why? Because there's profit in it for me. Now, if you're doing it, which a lot of people do, they do. I use social media purely for business. I don't mess around. I wouldn't be using this stuff if I wasn't making money. I would not be on social media if I wasn't making money. Right? I know that don't sound nice to people. Some people, oh, Elliot, then you're just doing it for the money. I'm like, uh, yeah, because the money puts food on my table. Otherwise, I would prioritize being with my family, right, at this particular time. But, you know. That's why I have my wife. I prioritize my family by bringing my wife home so she could homeschool the kids, right? Priorities, priorities, priorities. That's the most important thing. When I'm going down a rabbit hole of curiosity, I also have to ask myself, how is this going to benefit my family or how is this going to benefit my business? 
right? If I'm reading on a particular topic, guaranteed I'm going to be making a product about it. I'm going to create a course about it. I'm going to write a book about it. I'm going to make some videos to, you know, get more views about it. No, it's going to become a part of my work. But if I'm just learning it for curiosity's sake, I don't got time for that. Or if I'm learning it because it's going to, it's going to help me as a parent, well, you know, because there are certain things. I have daughters. I have daughters. I'm not a girl. I don't know anything about it. And I know how women have been led so astray, as we're talking about in this world. So I have to learn what is a rightly ordered woman, right? My wife is a great example. And I'm not saying she's not doing that job. But as a father, it's my responsibility to hold my children to rightly ordered standards, right? That's why I'm not just making this stuff up when I talk about women and I'm pulling it out of my ass. I'm reading about this stuff. I'm, 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 I'm taking classes about this stuff. Why? Because it's going to profit my family and it profits my, profits my business because I can talk to you guys about these things. I don't learn. Here, here's the crazy thing. I never learned about women so that I could meet women. I've been with the same girl since I was 14 years old. People even try to knock me as a result. But what they don't realize is I have objective perspectives on this because I've studied it like a scientist. Not like these guys who they are using it, you know, they're learning these things out of desperation. I need to do, I need to get laid. Me, I, can, I came back as a middle-aged man and approached it from an objective perspective. That's why I can say the things I say and I have no hang-ups about it, Right? The guys in the day in, in, in the red pill manosphere, they can't talk about fornication the way I do. Why? Because they're fornicators and they were teaching fornication. Me? I transcended all that so I could look at it like a scientist and say, hey, this ain't no good. Right? But I learned that why? Uh, my children and my students. I've been given that gift, that per, that a gift of that perspective. Most people don't have, right? So I learned about women not because I want women. I learned about women so that I can serve the people that I serve better. Isn't that amazing? Right? Otherwise, I wouldn't spend no time learning about women. My wife and I were doing great together. We're fine. No hangups. I just started learning more about myself as a man. I realized, oh, man, I'm not playing my role. I'm not doing my part. But then as I started learning about women, I looked at my wife and I was like, damn, I was a good woman. I didn't even know how good my woman was until I started learning about women. <laughs> right? So that's it. That's all. And that's all I got to say, dude. Um, priorities are important. Understanding your limitations. As, as a young man, it's one thing people don't want to hear about. They're not, they, they're not ready to face. But the, the quicker you can begin to recognize your limitations, the more you can consolidate what's important and focus on that, dude. Done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war, as well as how it's affecting your health, your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, How Millions of Men Are Fighting Back and Winning the War Against Masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit MakeMenStrongAgain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind and has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world, but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.